Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 10, building an app, color sleuth number 10. Next step, alternating turns. This is another step that requires three parts. But notice there's a pattern to what we're starting to do, and it is a common one. Add a global variable, add a new function definition that updates a variable in some way, add a call to the new function you just made. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. We're going to add a global variable called current player equal number one to the top of the program. We're going to add a new function definition in your code for switch player with an if statement and console.log message. It should look like something below. And we have a little example here we'll talk about in a minute. Third, we're going to add a call to switch player as the last line inside the check correct function. Finally, we're going to test it out. After you add this code, you should see a new message in the console amongst the other indicating whose turn it is. The output might look something like the output shown to the right. Look for lines that say current player is two. Note, right now, most of our output is in the console because it is easy and fast to verify that things are working. We're gonna start updating our UI next. Well, that seems pretty simple. Really what we're doing is we're working with a new function here. And this function looks like it is going to switch players. So if current player is one, current player is going to equal two. Else, current player is going to equal one. And then we have a console log message saying current player is. All our function is pretty much doing is saying, hey, if current player equals one, that means current pl player two is up. Else, current player one is going to go. And then we're gonna output a console.log message that says current player is, and then who. So three things to do today. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to add a global variable. And this variable is just going to be current player equal one. And all that's telling me right there is, hey, your current player is going to start off as number one. Don't forget your semicolon there. Now we have it defined, but not called. Second part is we're going to add a new function definition to your code for switch player. If you look down here, there is no switch player function. What we're gonna have to do is to make our own. I'm gonna comment it out, and this is gonna be called switch player right here. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to get a function out here, and I'm just gonna drag my function down here. And this function is gonna be called switch player. And what does the switch player do? Well, if current player is equal to one, then next one will be current player two. Else, that means current player two is happening, and then we'll default to player one. Add our braces right here. Current player is equal to two, and our semicolon. Let's just make sure these look alike here, and everything looks similar. Now we got to take care of our else statement. So I'm going to come down here. Oops. Don't delete too much here. And we're going to do our open brace, else brace current player equal one semicolon. It says it is defined, but it is not called, and we're gonna take care of that in a minute. Right there is my entire function. What we have less to do now, though, is we need to add a call to switch player in the last line of our check correct function. And check correct, because I commented out, is right here. So after we set the board, we're just gonna say, hey, run switch player function like that. As you can see, I have a little spelling error here. 
Now that I got it spelled right, no more errors on it. What did I do again? Well, I made my global variable, which is setting current player to one. So that means player one is going to go first. I added a new function, which is switching player. That pretty much means, hey, if current player equals one, then you're gonna to move to player number two. Otherwise, you're gonna to switch to current player one. Just a way to go back and forth. When I hit run, I should see my debug console down here, something that goes player one turn, player two turn, just like this. Let's go ahead and test our code out. We hit run. The current correct one is button four. I'm gonna click that one. Checking button four, you got it right. Current one is a button four, but nothing outputted, why not? Well, we forgot our most important part, which was our console.log statement there. I'm just gonna go right in between these two braces right here, and I'm just going to type in console.log, and this one is going to say current, player is space plus current player. Uh-oh, looks like we put this in the wrong spot. So let's just highlight this whole thing here. Control C, let's go over here, Control V. We wanna make sure we get rid of this brace here. We can now get rid of all this there. Don't forget your semicolon afterwards. Now, it should output which player it is down here. Let's go ahead and check that. Reset run. It is button four, we press it. Current player is number two now. Click it, current player is one. So every time I get one right, it switches over. Notice if I get it wrong, so the, first, the right one here, clicks on that, still has the right player, now it switches over. Be careful when you're doing this. All we're doing at this point is outputting to our console.log. In the next couple of lessons, we'll make this more automatic, but for right now, we're just checking to make sure our code works. And it looks like it's working the way it should. Looking back up here, we added a global variable, we added a new function, and then we called the new function. Everything looks like the example, and I think that's all code.org wanted. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you on the next lesson.